Hey, how's it going? And today we are taking a look at the scene graph system in Unreal Editor for Fortnite using verse code. And we're just going to take a quick look at entities and components, and we're not even going to create a prefab. This is loosely based on the documentation. And I also did a tutorial just recently, I'll put a link in the description about the life cycle of the simulation because that can be really confusing when you're first starting with this. I'm just in the blank island template, I'm turning off revision control, and I'm just going to go create. I've had to do this several times a day. I've been working on this for most of the day. It's really changing and different and unusual and there's a lot to learn. So this could all change in the future. Okay, so we're in a blank project and to start with, this is all in experimental mode right now. So, but there's no question in my mind that this is going to be the wave of the future at some point. There, this system, this scene graph is going to be huge. So anyway, scene graph system, and we'll click that. It's weird, even when you click that, you don't see the check mark for a minute. There it goes. Okay, so we're all set. Now what that does means that we can create entities and drag them into the scene. So if you don't have place actors window up, you just come up to verse or windows here and go place actors. And then if you click more, you should see entities here, and then you can just drag this into the scene. And an entity is essentially just an invisible container. If I come here on the outliner, you can see it has a, on its details panel, it has, let me close this up, it has a transform component. So this is roughly equivalent to an actor in Unreal Engine. It's just essentially an invisible container with a transform. And that is it. And so what it's meant to do is to contain components and then you can put a variety of components and then you can nest other entities inside that entity and so it becomes a set of Russian dolls with components in it. So we're just going to come over here to component and we're just going to do something simple and we're going to add a mesh component and we'll just go ahead and add a cube just like that. Then what we're going to do and this is where I was getting tripped up before, is we can add a verse component. So we're going to come here to verse and go new verse component. And it already has some boilerplate template code in there. I'm just going to call this new component template one just so that I don't conflict with other stuff I might have written today. Because I've done this so many times it's not even funny. And there is our code. Now interestingly we just have a little bit of code to write in here. I'll do this later. Here, I'm just going to change this. Instead of saying on begin simulation, I'm going to put I'm going to put verse component activated. Okay, and then down here on simulate, I'm just going to delete these two lines of code. Scene graph goes through a series of life cycles. It it has a life cycle stage, a six stages. It has on initialize, add to scene on begin simulation, on simulate, remove from scene, and uninitialize. And what's interesting and confusing is that ending the game starts the simulation. The simulation runs on its own, can run on its own, but ending the game will actually trigger it to starting and ending the game, not starting the game. And it runs in edit mode, in Fortnite edit mode, and in Fortnite play mode. So that's also confusing. So anyway, you'll see in this example what I'm, hopefully you'll see. One of the things that recently changed in Unreal in Verse is that we used to have a get creative objects with tag and they changed it to find. So when you see get, usually that means it's going to return an array. And when you see find, it's going to return what's called a generator. What we're going to do this first line of code is we're going to go have it find essentially all the components, all the entities with components in our scene. And so right now there's just one, but there'll be more in just a, a minute here. So we're going to give a name for what it returns, and we're going to call it comp generator, because that's what it's going to ultimately return as a generator, not an array. And we're going to go colon equals, and it's an entity is what we're looking for, and the dot operator. And these names are, I think they're getting out of hand, but maybe this is the best name they could come up with. But it's called find, <laughs> I feel like we're doing genealogy or something, but find descendant components, I'll hit tab, and then we gotta tell what component we're looking for, and we're looking for a mesh component. We want the component so that we can do stuff to it, make stuff happen. 
So, and this is not a fallible condition. This is a no fail operation here. So there's no if statements needed. Now, next, what we're going to do, one, two, three, four, is we're just going to run through a for loop. So this returns a generator. If I hover over it, it should say generator somewhere in here. That see where it says generator? It returns a generator, not an array. So what we're going to do is do a for loop then, and it doesn't matter really what we call the first thing, but this is just a placeholder we'll call element, and then we'll call this comp generator that we just created, because it's going to spit out all the names it finds, and then we'll put colons there, and then all we're going to do here is we're going to put it to sleep. I want to put it to sleep for a little while so that we can see the effect. And you'll notice this too, is that on begin simulation doesn't have suspends up here, but on simulate does. So just for that reason, I'm putting async functions in here. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we can go element, I believe, element dot uh, disable, because that's a command that we can perform on a... So if you click here and we follow these links, you'll see all these different finds. You can find entities with tags, with components. It's, there's like seven or eight of them. And then there's different operations that you can perform. There's a lot to learn in that API. But if it finds the mesh component, then we, we are able, if I click mesh component, you'll see one of the things we can do is disable it, which means turning off the rendering of the mesh. And that's all we have to do. And because this component is attached to the entity, it's able to search for them here. So if we tried to build this in a separate verse component, like in the verse explorer, it's, it might not see the reference. So anyways, so we'll go ahead and build our verse code. And notice we have an entity now. And then I can just duplicate it. So I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm just going to left-click and drag, hold Alt, left-click and drag, and make four blocks like that. So now we got four entities, and they all have this code in them, right? So what we're going to do is let me just build the first code one more time, make sure I didn't miss anything. And then I'm just going to go ahead Come up here where it says uh, those three dots and make sure auto start game is off. And then I'll just go ahead and launch the session. Okay, so let's see what happens. Oops. So let me go back into here. I'm going to go ahead and remember what I said about the simulation should be running when I jump over, but let's see what happens. Let me go start game. Oh, let's see how they went off the screen. I don't know if you caught that. So now start doesn't start the simulation. End starts the simulation. So we go end, and you see there are four blocks. And if it's working, those blocks should go off the screen in about 30 seconds. So it took me forever to get my mind around that, this simulation. In fact, while it's running, I can jump in to start and it'll still keep, the simulation still running. So we have maybe 15, 10 seconds more to go. But you'll see the blocks disappear. Or that means that the code is working. See how they went away? So the simulation is working. So now if I hit escape and go end, now the blocks are back. The simulation has started again. The life cycle started again. And in 30 seconds, the blocks will go off the screen again. So this is just a, you know, a first little put your foot in the water into the scene grab thing because it's going to, it's really going to be something. I, I, you can see it coming. I can see it coming. And it's going to be the way that we're going to be working. So I'm just trying to get a jump on it. <laughs> there it goes, okay. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care and I'll talk to you next time.